What's going on guys, this is JT here with M4BB.com to give you a little uh, preview slash hands-on of the brand new Priv by BlackBerry. As you guys know, this is BlackBerry's first Android power smartphone and it kind of makes it unique in the market because of one other reason, this uh, beautiful slide out keyboard. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hardware, especially this keyboard, because it's awesome. Um, and what you guys can find should you decide to order it if you've already ordered it um, or if you're waiting until it hits uh, AT&T this uh, coming November 6th. Um, right off the top, obviously you guys can see this beautiful display. Uh, BlackBerry decided to go with a Quad HD um, curved edge to edge uh, display similar to what we see um, on Samsung's S6 Edge and S6 Edge Plus. Um, it does feel a little bit wider, I think, than any other smartphone I've used. I'm not sure if BlackBerry did that on purpose or what the deal was. Maybe it has to do with the keyboard. Um, it's not something bad at all. I'm not complaining. It's just it's a little bit of a different feel. Um, and this Quad HD display definitely really, really um, looks really good. It's an AMOLED display, so you're going to have a couple of different little things that we're, we're going to talk about in the review um, when the screen is off that you can see. I'm personally a fan of LCD versus AMOLED, but I gotta say this is a really, really nice screen. Um, brightness hasn't been an issue whatsoever um, in broad daylight or anything like that. So I don't know, I think BlackBerry did a pretty good job with this uh, screen overall. Let me just turn on the brightness a little bit. There we go. So in terms of uh, the slider, let's talk a little bit about this keyboard. BlackBerry calls this technology Smart Slide. Um, and you can see this keyboard right here. It doesn't have the frets that we come to love with the classic, um, the Passport and the Bold, uh, but this keyboard is actually pretty good in terms of just overall experience. Uh, let's, let's show you guys a little bit of typing here. As you guys can see, you can still flick up on the uh, keyboard here what you are doing. Nope, not dying, doing. My taping skills are a little bit off when I have a camera right in front of me. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, I think I prefer the virtual keyboard and typing on glass over the physical. But if you are a fan of these physical keys, you're not going to have any problem. The phone doesn't feel top heavy when you're using it. Um, it's actually really comfortable to hold even with one with one hand. So. If you want to, you know, delete words, as you guys know, these uh, these are the gestures that are also available on the Passport. So um, that keyboard, I can't really complain uh, about. It's not as uh, cushiony as the Classics was, but it's still pretty good. So no complaints from this end. Uh, if you are a glass taper like I am, you're going to find that the BlackBerry 10 keyboard, uh, the BlackBerry keyboard, I should call it, is also really, really... Um, uh, friendly in terms of gestures and in terms of flick typing. Um, how do you think you have? I don't know. I'm just typing out random words here, but um, again, you can have these different gestures for deleting and for you know flick typing. Um, once you get used to it, I think people are gonna uh, be able to type a little bit faster than they do on a regular uh, Google keyboard, for example. Um, some people may like the swiping gestures, like from Swift Key and others. Um, I'm personally a fan of Flex Key, so some of the gestures are very similar. Some are a little bit different, um, but overall, it's a very, very good keyboard to use, and I don't think anybody's going to have any problems with that. So that's the keyboard. Down here in the front of the device, we can also—I don't know if you guys can see this in the the camera—you uh, have a speaker grill, which is actually it's it has pretty good sound. Um, if you if you're watching videos, if you're listening to music or anything like that, the um, the speaker actually does a pretty good job of it. Let's see if I can find some, uh, some of my music to play for you guys. I hope you guys like Hosier because it's one of my, let's see. Yeah, so the sound is, again, it's pretty good. I don't think it's gonna blow anyone away, just in terms of quality. Uh, what you can do with a speaker on a cell phone, I think is pretty limiting. 
um, overall versus you know a uh, stereo system and stuff like that but I think uh, for those that do want to use it to just listen to music randomly or watch videos I think you're more than uh, capable of doing it's also going to be work really really well um, speaker fun as well so um, I'm glad they included that it sounds nice nice enough to be included in this high-end package um, let's turn over the device and on the back here it's a little smudgy unfortunately but we have the um, 18 meg megapixel camera which is certified by Schneider Kreuznacht I think that's how it's pronounced I was looking it up before making this video just to double check um, and I think it's I think I got it right it also features a dual flash so you can uh, have that true tone um, color when you have uh, when you take pictures with flash so that's actually pretty useful uh, for those that have used BlackBerry devices in the past, especially the Q10 and the Z30, you'll be very familiar with this material. This is a glass weave, as BlackBerry calls it. Um, it's got a flat finish, which I personally like. Um, makes smudges a little bit less noticeable, I think, just overall in using it. And it provides nice, solid grip for the phone. So overall, I, I'm, I'm a fan of this. Um, near the bottom, you have the micro USB port. It has a slim port as well, so you can connect this to your TV. Um, and the headphone jack as well. On the left hand side we have the power button which on my unit it's unfortunate it's a little bit flush. I, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of this and it kind of moves a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that that's not the case with other units and it was just mine but I had a little bit of trouble turning on and turning off the screen with the power button. Um, the volume rockers on this end tend to be a little bit more raised um, which I like. Uh, speaking of the volume rockers, you have the up down obviously, and this is technically a mute unmute button here in the middle. Um, if you use the BlackBerry 10 device before, uh, on BlackBerry 10 this was a play pause button. That is not the case with the Priv, it's only a mute unmute. So if you're listening to music or watching a video or something and you press this button, it will mute it, but it won't stop it from playing. So just keep that in mind when you decide to use it. Up top, let's see, we have the micro uh micro sim which i guess technically it's a nano sim sorry on the right hand side and a micro sd on the left hand side this micro sd supports up to two terabytes of removable storage which i don't think even exists right now but blackberry said that once it does they'll support it so that's that's a story in terms of um just overall hardware that's that's what we can expect from the priv um it features a pretty massive battery 3410 billion amp hours so that's uh, that'll keep you running. I've gotten maybe I want to say 12 to 14 hours a day of battery usage and pretty pretty heavy usage is that so um, they've done a pretty good job. On the software end, uh, this is pretty much about as close to stock Android as you can get without it being stock Android. It reminds me a lot of Motorola's um, skin. Uh, Blackberry calls it the Blackberry launcher because that's a smart, simple name. And it features a couple of cool things, like for example, the BlackBerry Hub, which as you guys know, is a unified inbox, which connects email, text messages, in this case, BBMs, Facebook, Twitter, and also LinkedIn. I don't have my LinkedIn uh, page connected to this one, but if I wanted to, I could. Um, right now, the Hub functions, it's a little bit, uh, since it's its own app, and I guess you guys can see this here, it's a little bit, if it's closed and you have to open it, it tends to slow down a little bit and can be a little bit laggy, especially like for example, check this out. You see that? That animation, I'm not a huge fan of how uh, how that animation is a little bit choppy. Um, since it is software, I'm hoping that BlackBerry can fix this with a couple updates. They have been rolling out updates pretty much every single day since I got this device, which was last week. Um, and it has progressively gotten a little bit better. So. I'm hoping that remains the case um, as we go through launch and just keep going, keep going forward. Um, another cool feature, you guys already saw the BlackBerry 10 keyboard, uh, the productivity tab. This is also new. So this shows you uh, different uh, things that are, I'm getting a lot of text messages apparently. Um, the hub, we have the calendar here, we have tasks and contacts. Um, this is kind of like, it gives you a little bit of a quick glance. So for example, uh, let's say you're just on Twitter or on Instagram, I guess. Let's check out Twitter. And you just want to check out something that came in. Well, I'm not doing it right. I have a camera right in front of me. There you go. Um, you can actually just do that. 
and just cycle through. Regardless of where you're at, you can actually just keep going. And you can move this tab. I keep doing this. You can move this tab to actually be on the right hand side and left hand side, wherever you prefer it to be. Um, I noticed I was hitting it by accident a lot when uh, I had it on the left hand side. So I moved it to the right. You can actually adjust the transparency. Let's do that here. That way I can see it a little bit better. And where is it? It's right here. Move it a little bit further up. And bam, there it is. So that's pretty cool. Productivity tab right now, it doesn't incorporate for some reason anything other than text messages and emails when it comes to the hub. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna incorporate BBMs and all that, and all that other stuff. Uh, but, you know, hopefully uh, they're able to do that going forward. BlackBerry has also uh, decided to put a little bit more of a focus on security when it comes to Android as well. Um, they have they built in this pretty cool app, um, which tells you what condition of security your device is in. So, for example, mine is in fair condition. Um, I don't have a screen lock on it. Uh, but if I were to change that, it would take it to the green uh, side without any problem. Speaking of screen lock, which you can actually set, let me show you guys real quick. Uh, we have the swipe, which is just regular, you know, swipe to open. You can also add a pattern, a picture password, which if you're on a BlackBerry 10 device, you already know how secure that is, a regular pin, or a regular alphanumeric password as well. So um, BlackBerry is giving users different options when it comes to the priv to be able to have it. Uh, I kind of wish they would have included a fingerprint scanner to give us that, like, that quick convenience of just having a fingerprint scanner on board, but I don't know, maybe the priv 2 will have it. Who knows so that pretty much sums it up the priv uh, in a nutshell it's a really cool device um, I think Android users more than BlackBerry 10 users will like it um, I get a feeling BlackBerry 10 users is gonna be a little bit of a big jump just getting used to uh, the multitasking button and not having um, that swipe gesture oh speaking of the swipe gesture before I forget uh, the BlackBerry hub is accessible by pretty much swiping up anywhere and then going selecting this uh, hub button which is right there so you can open that up it's not the same as it is on blackberry 10 but i guess it's better than nothing uh, universal search is available if you hit it to the left and obviously you have google which is going to be right down the middle so that's pretty much the blackberry priv in a nutshell um, Again, I think Android users will find this device more appealing than BlackBerry users, the BlackBerry 10 users specifically, just because it is a little bit of a difference in how things are approached and just how things are handled. Um, but overall, I hope everybody gives it a shot. At least, you know, check it out in your local AT&T store, or if you know somebody that has one, you know, uh, ask them to borrow it and see. Also, check out the full written review. We go into detail a lot more um, on all these specific topics that we hit. Um, I didn't talk about the camera too much. Uh, it's a little bit of a, I don't know, it's one of those things that you can kind of debate how the camera is, to be honest. Um, the front facing camera is total garbage, by the way, but uh, the back camera is a lot better um, than we've seen on previous BlackBerry devices, uh, but it still leaves some things to be desired in certain cases. So we go into that a little bit more detail in the written review, so make sure you check that out. And as always, stay locked to n4bb.com for more on the BlackBerry Proof.